How's everybody doing? <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the Christmas bonus gift. I'm staying here at the uh, villa that I'm now uh, rent for the whole month. I shall be here for the rest of the month and then I'm going to uh, Airbnb in Plant City. I live uh, actually tomorrow night and then I'll, I should fly in by tomorrow evening and from there I will stay until the 12th and I will be fixing and getting things together then I fly back to West Palm Beach and then fly back for the conference on the 16th in Plant City. I'm going tomorrow to be able to make all the booking arrangements in the hotel. Okay. <laughs> well, those are the announcements. Also, I gotta tell you, uh, someone was saying that I was leading people the wrong way when it came to the Bible, saying that the path to God is evil. Listen, maybe I didn't phrase it right, but let me tell you, there are many paths to God, and evil is one of those paths. Why do you think people go to the ship? There are people who don't believe in God, and they go to the ship, and I mean go to the ship. They go to evil shit, and they have no other request but to turn to God. So, if you are an atheist or, or an unbeliever, and life threw you to some shit, now you believe in God. And that the same thing as saying that evil is a path to God? You have to go to the ship, in order to realize that the only thing that could save you from that shit is God. So therefore, you never knew God, but because you went through what you went through, now you have a relationship with God because He rescued you out of it. That's what I meant. Okay? And since we're talking about that, let's talk about Pluto. This is a new series because we already finished with the In Between Cusper series. Now, I got no love or donations from the past few days on my uh, PayPal uh, donation for content. I hope you have a little more of a Christmassy giving heart at this time and uh, throwing for Uncle Fernando for some dough. Because I got a staff to pay and I got a lot more information from you, for you. Now, the uh, paid subscription. A lot of you have been asking questions about the paid subscription. That's already on the way. I'm already getting the package together, and by the 15th, a day before the conference, I will be able to um, enlist or enroll people for the paid subscription. That way you pay monthly seven, eight dollars and you're home free. You can still donate for content if you like, but the paid subscription component of YouTube will be different content than the public content that I put out in the air, okay? So that is I will be exclusive to subscribers that will be involved in the paid subscription. So, and I'm going to talk about all kinds of shit there that we will not be able to talk about on public or YouTube air. But I will be telling you pretty much a lot of good, good, good goodies, you know, separate content. Equally important and still different from the school content because I run a school and the content there is different than the content that you get the paid subscription and the paid subscription content is different than what I am delivering publicly in the air. Okay, so I understand that if you want it all inclusive, donate. Okay, today we are going to talk about Pluto and the series of Pluto. Now, Pluto is the ruler of Scorpio, the eighth house. There is nothing, there is nothing pleasant about Pluto. Nothing pleasant about Pluto. Scorpio is evil. And when I'm talking, I'm not talking about, now guys, come on, you're, I'm talking now esoterically. Let me put that out there, esoterically. Not that every single individual Scorpio out there is evil. That is not what I'm talking about. Think at a higher level. You already know who I am. Think at a higher level. 
and an esoteric level. Scorpio is the sign of destruction. Does that mean that the Scorpio personality has a is destructive? No, but there are aspects to the personality of Scorpio that is destructive and is designed to be destructive. No different than the destructive, murderous nature of Aries, which is a sign that has the permission to take life and to kill by the sword. Not that much different from Scorpio, which also has the right to kill and take life. And since we're talking about taking life, what more symbol of the devil than this delicious Pluto Martini? I created it. There is the horns of Hades, and there is the black onyx of Topaz, which defines its color embedded in a very dimly red globe of vodka and cognac, symbolizing the actual color of the atmosphere of Pluto. The sun is bleak here, hardly seen, with lots of dark mass and strong volcanic eruptions or protrusions on the surface. A banana is white, and white is the color of snow, for Pluto is a planet deeply covered in ice. So, here's to you, Lord Hades. The reason why I'm dressed with black and red was the antennas of a madman and these delicious $500 shades. Pluto. Hello there. This is an homage and an honor to Jeffrey Green, who wrote about Pluto, volume one and two. Jeffrey Green, this is to your honor. It's not delicious. It's not delicious. But it's good. <laughs> good. It's not delicious. But it's good. Oh, the beaten character of the two John character of the two Oh, now let's get ready to talk about Pluto, the primal force behind every individual person. Ego. Boca. John character of the two Oh, <laughs> good afternoon, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's talk about Pluto in the first house. Those of you who are born with Pluto in the first house have died violently, suddenly, and without warning. Your life was a fast, fast, Fast paced reality. Women were objects to you if you're a man born with Pluto in Aries or Pluto in the first house. With Pluto in the first house, you fuck your own brother's wife or you fuck your own brother. You're burning destroyed villages. Animal, women and children, cattle, ruthless brutality and murder. With Pluto in the first house and in areas, there's no regard for life or to life. The personality with Pluto and the ascendant is that of a very domineering person. Ruthless in his thinking, oligarch in his mentality, and blustersingly ambitious, a sociopath, a narcissist, one who will bend to no one's will and will die trying to get to the top. Pluto in the first house, in the sign of Aries, 
We have not experienced Pluto in Aries. We have no one in the human population alive or dead that have bears this signature. Pluto was discovered in 1930. Before then, there was no record of Pluto because we didn't know that it existed. So nothing is written in literature about Pluto as the sign of cancer or beyond the sign of cancer. When Pluto was discovered in 1930, it was five degrees cancer. From there on, we know about Pluto. But before, Pluto in Gemini, Pluto in Taurus, Pluto in Aries, there is nothing in human literature and any kind of language on the planet that bears any testimony of Pluto in these signs. It is completely unknown. Well, thank God for my archive. They had to tell me what is not published in books. Pluto in Aries, the Viking, the devil in Christ. The Druids, mm, Atlantis, Pluto and Aries, what an era that was. Mm. No, it's not delicious. It's not delicious. I don't think much is delicious in Pluto, except bloodthirsty sexuality. Sexuality ambition. The same in Aries. I could live with that. <laughs> now, oh, a piece of banana. <laughs> Understand that with Pluto and the first house, you are going to be a badass looking bitch. Beautiful, magnetic, hypnotic. They say that Cleopatra or Helen of Troy can herald the look of a thousand ships. They said the same thing about Cleopatra. Well, that's Pluto in Aries. Well, look, from Medusa, are you turning to stone? Understand the power of attraction and allure and intent and piercing desire that can come to the eyes of a man or a woman. Pluto is the classical co-ruler of Aries, but make no mistake, it is the ruler of Scorpio. So here in Aries is like a double trouble, double whammy. Pluto in Aries. The age of Atlantis, the age of the Vikings, in the second revolution around. Things happen every 26,000 years now. Pluto rules these chronological cycles. The cycle of Pluto is 248 years around the zodiac belt. That's a whole revolution. So Pluto has been around the signs many, 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 many times through many, 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 many revolutions around. It depends on which part of the wheel and which revolution we're talking about. Because time is relative, but history is not. <clears throat> so understand that Pluto is the, the force behind creation. It is the force behind the unseen. It is the force behind the sun. It is the force that holds the cosmos together. It is dark matter it is dark energy. It is all of that and more. It is God itself. It is the negative polarity of Gaia, the number zero, which is why Pluto it looks like a P. The ovum, the circle, and then 
the stick coming down into an angle, which represents demonology. And demonology is another expression, number five, the five points of star. And we as humans have five fingers, five toes, we have five limbs. The expression of man in material matter. This is the essence of true demonology. Spirit encapsulated in human form. Pluto in Aries and in the first house. Now, for the split, let me let me light a split. <laughs> oh, um, Florida is good for me. It does what does for my skin. Look at my hair. I mean, I'm like a, I'm, I'm like a new bitch. <laughs> a new bitch. <laughs> or a new nigga. Either way, I'm both. <laughs> It's good. This is very Pluto. Very Pluto. Don't forget the red. You know? Sensual, sexy. Even if I'm not, if I believe that I am. <laughs> Here, it's about what you believe in yourself to be. It is the dark side of you, the shadow side of you. And if you can own the dark within you, and the light within you, then you are on your way to becoming God. Because God is both. And nature is both too. So, do you understand the importance of Pluto? Not just in the cosmos, but also in the human personality and ego. Okay? <laughs> Well, I guess I mean. Mm. Mm. Oh. It, it hits right. Ah. 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 <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, part of the conference that I've been giving in uh, Plan City on the 16th has a lot to do with a lot of things. If you get to come and you have personal time with me, because I'm only accepting 10, top 15, it gives me more personal time with you. And I can tell you a lot of things. Ooh, you got to come. Plant City, the 16th January. Okay, you got you get personal time with me. I will be staying in Plant City for another two weeks after the conference. Mm. Pluto, in the first house. Because I described I describe the women. I described the women. Pluto in the first house. In a man's chart, is terrifying. Terrifying. But first, I need a one minute break because I gotta re up the motherfucker. <laughs> well, well, here we go. <laughs> Look, I didn't want you to talk about it. Wait, are you going to Of a man with Pluto on the center, oh my god. Even straight dudes go like, 
God damn. They look like Vikings. Legs and thighs that are one of the legs is like two of my legs. And I got legs and thighs. They're like chest good, like oh they look like fucking like like Vikings and steroids. If we're talking about the Slavic white races. If we're talking about the more ethnic races, we see the same paradigm. Hercules, the Greek, and the and, and, and the Roman. Come on, the gladiators. That was Pluto in everything. Come on, even straight to look at the gladiators. They they, they have body on. They fucking Italian white dudes, the Romans. They have body. That's Pluto in Aries, and Aries was the age of the Roman Empire. The rise of the Caucasus or in the Aryan race. And they have body. If we go to Africa and we talk about the same age but with the blacks, they have bodies too. You know, they, 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 were, they were built like machines. Pluto and Aries are in the first house. Oh. This lovely. Florida afternoon. I can never do this in New York. I'd be sleeping by now because I'd be like drunken all day, all night, doing my videos, and then crashing in the day. I'm, I don't, I don't miss none of that. <laughs> none of that. And I'm Plutonian. I can go down, dirty, and up and right. This is so much better. <laughs> but it, it's not delicious. But it's good. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. But good. <laughs> good. So understand that if you are born with Pluto in the first house, you come across like an Adonis, a hot, sexy gladiator of the Roman period, Ben Hur, Spartacus. Hercules, you know, all the, you know, hot looking white dudes in shorts or in the black race or in the Indian Asian race, you see the same paradigm and sexiness with the black Adonis. Okay. They are, that's all. So if you have Pluto in Aries or in the first house and you're a woman, you can conquer any nigga you want. You can turn a nigga into a bitch. And if you are a man with Pluto in the first house, or in Aries in the first house, you can you can turn men out. <laughs> you know, your beauty and sexiness physically and the strength of your physical body equals in the strength of your heart and your mind and spirit. A true gladiator, a true Aryan in the 21st century. Pluto in the first house or in Aries. Mm. You know, I can't wait to eat these horns, right? <laughs> but I need to cook. You know, so it can hit mm, real good. <laughs> oh my god, oh my god. So, how do you tame that kind of energy? How do you tame that kind of energy? Okay. Well, first of all, if you want to succeed in, to, in, in, in taming this energy, you have, you have to own the fact that you are this powerful man or woman. You have to own it. Because if you don't own it, then you're not going to succeed. You're not going to succeed. And let me tell you, you have to believe in this energy that you have within you. Because that is the primal essence of who you are. Guys, donate for the next video. Donate, okay? www.paypal.com 
No, www.paypal.me slash the I will be doing the next video. Guys, donate.